Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. I've got one of the most energetic, enthusiastic, <laughs> certainly entrepreneurial people. I know he's a top 35 under 35. We're going to find out what that means. Uh, it's the one and only Brian Burns is with us. What's up, Brian? How you doing today? Oh, I'm doing well. It's good to it's good to be on the show. I've I've seen you know quite a few episodes. What are you at now? Like almost fourteen hundred episodes almost now. Fourteen hundred. Good. You do you do research. I love it. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry you've had to go through as many shows as you probably had to look at, but I I appreciate. it. I always love having great guests on, um, and I love this top thirty five under thirty five, which is real estate related, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, because I think it's so important for people to see. Hey, what's somebody who's around my age, not my age, your age, uh, how, how are they actually doing it? How are they um, reaching these goals and how are they doing the business as much business as they are? So we'll talk about that. But before we do, I told you before we went live that the audience loves some origin story. They want to know your background and you've got a great one. So share a little bit of point A to point B with the audience. So I was prior to uh, real estate, I was a firefighter paramedic. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's a very uh, intense job. Um, and then, you know, just like a lot of people, they started, uh, you know, they start off doing, uh, you know, doing it part time. So I thought, you know, what a, what an opportunity, because generally speaking at the fire department, you work for 24 hours and then you have 48 hours off. Um, you know, you got to think though, you're actually working 24 hours for that day. So you get calls at midnight, 2 AM, 3 AM, you could be up all day for a full 24 hours. So you don't get the necessary, you don't, it sounds great on paper, but really you're spending that first day kind of, you know, unwinding, um, you know, and then you really only have one day. Uh, so I did juggle both of those for a while and it got to a point where, uh, you know, where I was, I was looking at it and in my particular department, you would get what's called mandatory where they just, you wouldn't leave. They would say, you have to stay for the, another 24 hours. Wow. Um, and it was to the point where that was happening so frequently. And I would look at, you know, my business and building my business. Well, you know, if you know what days are going to be off, it's easy to plan. But if I could randomly get a phone call that says, you know, if you're here for another 24, you know, I was looking and kind of weighing out, you know, how much money am I losing by being here? You know, and I wanted to know that, that, you know, this isn't just I'm busy for three months and then it's going to die down. I need to know that the business is going to be consistent because, you know, fire department, I left a, a pension. I left a guaranteed salary, amazing health care, all of that, um, you know, to strike out and, and, you know, start real estate full time. You took a risk. You took a yep. risk. <laughs> Tell me, give me the two origin stories, though, on that. Like what what got you into the fire department? And then as you're in the fire department, why was it real estate that was attractive? to you so like two different because i think it's cool to see what people why people made the choices in their careers that they did yeah so the reason i started the fire department i've always that has been something that i've always wanted to do um you know so i uh, and it's it was very difficult to get you know it's it's kind of weird because when the economy is bad it's actually hard you know uh, it's it's harder to get a government job because it's stable and whatever. But when the when the economy is really good, people start leaving and branching out. So when I started, it was 2008, 2009. So it was you would show up and there'd be like 1800 applicants for 10 spots open, you know. Um, so it's very, very competitive. I've always wanted to do it, though. And then um, but what really transitioned me over from from the fire department to uh, to real estate was there was a cap. You know, and I, you know, you will always, you know, exactly to the cent how much money you're making that day. And there was just something about it. I've always had, you know, not a salesy personality, but, but, a, um, you know, I really liked, I really loved what I did at the fire department and I really loved real estate. When I was, a when I was younger in high school, I took like, um, uh, those machine drawing classes and I would draw up like blueprints and stuff like that. I love that. Um, but what I realized is that, is that, you know, the guy next to me at the fire department, you know, if I'm a paramedic and I kill every patient that I touch, the guy next to me who saves every single one gets no benefit for doing that. Right. So, you know, and not to say that the only reason you're not doing it is because of <laughs> bonus be money, right? <laughs> but, you know, there was just no, um, there was no, I don't say benefit, but there was really no incentive. There you go. To incentive to be good at your job. There was a lot of people who would kind of just show up every day and, and, you know, once I once I realized that is that, you know, I 
yeah. And then I just said, you know, I have to go, I have to go this other route where my, where my income is basically dictated by me, you know? I think that's, I think when you have the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial spirit, which you obviously do, it's yeah. very hard to be caged like that. And not, I'm not saying that being a firefighter is being caged, but if you have it, you want to, um, the money would be dependent on how your efforts are and what you do. Right. I think when you have that kind of spirit, it's very difficult to just get that paycheck yeah. and know no matter what I do, it is never going to go above this. Right. Uh, unless you get some kind of raise. But overall, you could work an 18 hour day or a 10 hour day and you're pretty much going to be in the same um, yeah. boat. So talk about real estate. So when you made the leap to full time, was it all champagne and Bentleys and roses? <laughs> uh, tell people, because I think there's a lot of people out there that want to make a leap. They feel led to do something different. Um, but it's uh, it's not as glamorous in the beginning as you might think it, it is. No, it's definitely not. It it is difficult, and it's and it's hard, especially when you first when you first begin. Um, you know, because I, I can tell you, you know, and I see a lot of people, and I'm always happy to. I, I so when people reach out to me about real estate, you know, you think that they just kind of want free handouts and stuff. I love to help people out and give them advice when they reach out to me. Uh, when they begin real estate, because either one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to continue to be, uh, you're going to continue down the business or in the business and we're going to do, uh, we're going to work together one time, or you're going to, you're not going to be doing it anymore. And people are going to, you can refer me business, right? Cause I was the only one who would, you know, help you out. And I really do enjoy teaching people how to, you know, teaching people these things. But one thing that I would say is, it's definitely not glamorous, but when you first start and, you know, sometimes you're holding these deals together, not just for your client, but, you know, rent or your mortgages do in the next week, you know, and you're like, no, closing needs to happen to, you know, this Thursday, we need that, you know. Um, the other thing too, you know, just some advice, there is going to be as soon as you get your real estate license, there is going to be a thousand phone calls a day trying to, you know, get you to buy all of these, all of these products, all of these things, you know, I think one of the biggest problems that I see with agents is they want to leap forward right into owning a team, renting office space. You know, this is my home office here. I don't, I don't really go into my actual office hardly at all. And you're saving hundreds, you know, 800 plus dollars a month on that easily. So I think the, the biggest thing that you would, my biggest piece of advice when as far as growing your business is don't overgrow it. A lot of people, they have like three transactions in a month or something and they're super busy and they're like, you know what? I need an assistant. I need a, you know, a transaction coordinator. I need this. I need that. And then for the next two months, they're, you know, they're spending all this money and and it's, it was just busy. It was just busy temporarily. It wasn't a permanent thing, you know, so. Yeah, I think I think people grow with your growth. What did you say? You don't want to overgrow. Uh, I, I think that's really important because I think people get uh, there's a lot of sparkly, shiny objects out there that can get you. Oh, well, if I do this, it's going to increase my sales. The problem I find is that most people haven't uh, focused on the basics yet. Yeah. And until you build up and you grow with your growth and until you are you have to manage your growth, you. Uh, yeah, we all want to do better and we want to do more and we want to free up our time, which a lot of those products are geared to, toward that. But you really have to make sure that it makes sense in your business plan. You have to make sure that you have the contacts, that the growth is sustainable. Uh, because if you take on that that new recurring bill and your growth is not sustainable and you don't have a great foundation, you're going to have buyer's remorse pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, so that's, a, that's with, great advice. Yeah, especially with lead purchasing. That's one of the biggest, you know, you, you really need to. I think something, too, that's really important is finding your niche. You know, you have to really, you know, some people, they don't want to do cold calls. Some people love it. I don't understand it, but some people actually do enjoy doing they the do. cold calls. They like it. to do, they're like, it's a game of mental chess, you know, to get the appointment. And I'm like, that's great. You really, you really should find your niche because every, it's, you know, another thing that people want you to do is training. They're like, hey, oh, well, look at this training program we have. They can tell you to do all of these things, but if it's something that you don't want to do, you will find an excuse not to do it. I'm thankful most of my business comes from my own sphere, but I have friends and that are very close in my personal sphere that are also real estate agents. So you really do want to find your niche and you want to be the go to source, but you also don't want to be the person who's always bringing up real estate. You want yes. you want to be the one who people ask about because Lauren, my wife, she always says, oh, you you guys talking about real estate and then like people will be the first to tell you, actually, no, I brought it up. Don't, you know, so 
that's another thing that you want to do is, you know, find your area, uh, you know, that's, that's going to, that works best for you personally. Agreed. And I think that's such a great point because there's a lot of times uh, we sit down, we go to a lot of social events too, that are networking, that are awards. Brian and I were just talking about the Orbeez. Uh, and it's amazing to me how even in that arena, there are some people in our professions that can't not talk about their profession. Yeah. Uh, they have a hard time building any kind of rapport or relationships. Uh, and I'm all for focus, but I think you have to be well-rounded. Uh, and yes. you have to have the ability to talk about something else other than the transaction or the the latest insanity in our world. And so I'm glad you brought that up. I keep meaning to bring that up a lot to people like, <laughs> hey, let's talk about your life, which is one of the reasons why we do the show. Yeah. Uh, because I want to hear this, the personal side of what you as an entrepreneur, what you as a top 35 under 35, how you do it. Um, if all you're going to sit here and do is talk about your listings and you're just sold yeah. and your buyers and we're going to be bored, not because it's you, but because that's one dimensional. It's not all of right. Brian Burns. Uh, so let's talk about top 35 under 35. Uh, that's a big deal. So tell the audience who might not know what that actually means, who it's affiliated with, because um, it's a big honor. So, yeah, it's uh, it's so the Orlando Real Producers and, and Aaron Luden has done an amazing job building that that program. I mean, it is so they do all kinds of stuff. They do, um, you know, we went to an event, you know, just the other day, but, you know, he does a lot of masterminds. And when, you know, it's I'm going to just brag about him a little bit because he does a really good job. He does the mastermind program. And usually when you see, quote unquote, mastermind, it's really not like a mastermind. You know, it's it's a lot of people generally you wouldn't call them the the titans of the industry you know what i mean and so but he gets some of the most amazing people there um but you know that being said uh so the 35 under 35 is the top you know top producing and you know not not necessarily just in volume but overall in business and, and growing their business uh over the that's under 35 so i'm i'm 32 i'll be 33 next uh or this coming uh september but yeah, it's a it's a really awesome program, and uh, I was really honored on it. I told I joked around with Aaron. I said uh, I said I was running out of years. I'm glad I made it this cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it is it's a huge honor, and I think anybody who scoffs at it probably just needs to work on their business plan. It's not like you get into business and your your whole goal is to be top thirty five under thirty five. It just comes with the hard work and the dedication and growing with your growth and all of those yeah. things that you talked about. Uh, because it is a big deal. And when we get recognition in our industry, and it seems like there's a lot of opportunities for all of us to be recognized, uh, this one really is more well-rounded. And I have to give kudos to Aaron, too, all the time. I think that he doesn't get enough credit for bringing the real estate community together as a whole. Yeah. Uh, and he also provides so much great educational information and tips on growing your business and how to work within uh, the shifting market. I mean, everything that he does is geared toward trying to bring more value to uh, the real real estate community. So I agree with you. Kudos to him. All right. So as we wrap up two things, first, uh, tell everybody, is the sky falling? Um, what's going on in the real estate market? Um, how do you approach the shift? Because there's been a slight shift, I'd say. Uh, but tell us how you're, how you're handling that and what you think the market looks like. So my, the one kind of the, thing that I'm sure I didn't make this up, but my thing, you know, that I tell my clients is slowing down doesn't mean going down. So that's, that is kind of how I describe it. So a lot of times what you'll see is, you know, a lot of, a lot of these listings that are experiencing price drops and all that, because of course, when you send your MLS stuff out every morning, all they see is just lists of price drops and stuff. I think the market has slowed down. And I think a couple of combinations of, of, you know, things that are, are happening right now. Because when you look at investing, you know, when you come back and look at it from like the 30, you know, from the mile high view, there's really only four avenues to go down. There's there's real estate, there's fixed interest. So like, you know, your T-bills and things like that. There's cash and there's the stock market. Yes. The, the real estate market is doing really well because none of those other markets are appealing right now. Right. So the, the stock market is down 40 percent cash. The, the cash in your hand is worth 8 percent, you know, 6 to 8 percent, depending on the day less. Um, you know, and then T-bills and all that stuff. Nobody, that's not a very appetizing investment. So that is why I think 
real estate has really just taken a run. The difference between real estate and the stock market is that real estate has a ton of built in, uh, first of all, safeguards from like any kind of, you know, especially since 2008, but they offer a lot of tax incentives for not leaving the market. Every time you sell a stock, you pay capital gains on it. If you sell real estate, even if you've made $100,000 on it, and then you reinvest in more real estate, you're not paying those capital gains. So it builds much more longer term uh, you know, investors So because there's such an incentive to stay in. So a little bit longer than a yes, no, but I always like to you know, help people realize why. Because the first thing they're going to say is, well, you're a realtor, of course, that you don't think it's going to go down. It'll never go down if you have anything to say about it. But it's really, it's good to help people understand the fundamentals of why it, it you know, things, there's, we're not on the precipice of some doomsday thing. There's a lot of doomsday and that's why I love, I love to talk. And uh, I've never, I've never had anybody doomsday me on the show. I'm sure I'm going to get dropped with that at one point. Uh, <laughs> because you all, in general, the people who come on the show have a very, there's positive. They, they look, you look for the positive and you know the market and you understand it. Uh, and that's also part of uh, learning your craft. You've got to understand your market. You've got to understand the shifts. Uh, and then yeah. you have to figure out how you're going to go with it. Otherwise, you will be lo- left in yeah. the dust. All right. One last question. It's a personal question. Uh, not too personal. Don't worry. Uh, I saw the sweat bead. There's no, none of that here. When I say the word hero, who's the first person that comes to mind? Oh, my mom. Tell me why. Uh, My mom raised us. uh, You know, my mom is uh, divorced. She raised three kids, uh, you know, and it's just uh, there's just been so many hurdles along the way without getting too personal. But, you know, there's just been so many hurdles along the way. And she's, you know, obviously has never given up, but has just been there whenever I needed, I couldn't have started my business without her, you know, because I knew that I had that, you know, obviously she's not there to take care of me or anything, you know what I mean? But like, I knew that I had, you know, I wasn't married at the time. So I knew that there was that somewhat of a safety net there that I, you know, and so that was always it. And just in general, like I said, she's raised three amazing kids. She would be there to do anything for us if we needed it. And, you know, she gave me raised me, but then also gave me the confidence to be able to branch out and be able to do this as well. So love that. I love the mom, dad ones. It's so good. Yeah. All right, Brian, uh, thank you so much for being on the show. You guys can reach Brian at brianburns.com. Obviously you can find him on social media. I'll have tagged him uh, everywhere. And look, if you're looking to buy or sell, there you go. You got Brian Burns, top 35, under 35. Thanks so much for being flexible on the show. Thanks for coming on the show. And thanks for what you do for our community, my friend. I appreciate you. Absolutely. It's great talking with you. Great talking with you. BrianBurns.com. We'll see you guys.